Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Citadel of Don Kin, the new capital of the kingdom of Frigoberto. And there is our hero, Frigoberto de Valencia, along with the Lady Nawaporn, his wife, and his advisors. And in the corner, you can even see his royal guard, his Tongu royal guard. But in this episode, we are not going to be discussing the troops of Tongu, but instead we are going to be discussing the troops the custom-designed troops of the kingdom of Frigoberto. But first, take a look at that beautiful flag with my symbol on it. And my financial chief is kind of a strange dude. He likes to hang out on top of the bench. I try not to discuss it with him. I do have some bad news. The armory apparently is bugged. All of the special weapons and things that I put in there, when I went and checked, about half of them had disappeared. Well, less than half. But some of them had disappeared without a trace. And so I immediately took everything and moved it to the household storage with Friga Nawaporn. So here's what I was able to save. And I'm also trying to save a banner from every of the great kingdoms that I defeat. I, however, am going to have to start putting food and drink in my household storage in order to have feasts. No use in having one now since I don't have any lords, but... When I do, there is one other option available to me, which is the secondary storage. And I put some white rice and rice seeds in there just to test and see if they stick around. All right. But let's take a look at the troops, the custom designed special troops of the kingdom of Frigoberto. So the first thing you start with when you recruit a troop from a village, and you can do this from any village whatsoever. It does not have to be a village within the kingdom of Frigoberto. It could be any village that is positive with you. You start off with a peasant. Now I have tried to make these troops, to the best of my ability, keep the color scheme of Frigoberto's flag as the blue color scheme. So you've got the blue shirt. He has a round shield with the sigil of Frigoberto on it. And some regular pants, some hide shins, and a short sword. As you can see, this is how it works. You're able to select equipment, and this is the equipment that your troops choose from. Now I did this wrong a couple times, and as a result, I lost some items of clothing, but I ended up making it work out. So you've got the round shield, which looks like this, basically. It has the Frigoberto boat on it. You've got the hood, the daub sword, the blue shirt, and he also has a hunting bow and some arrows. Those are the peasants. And then they upgrade, as you can see, to army recruits. Now the army recruit has a blue shirt, but a bit more heavy. He has the hide shins, and he also has a board shield and a black Ayuthian cap. the black leather helmet, the heavy board shield. He has a Chinese sword and also a hunting bow and arrows. And the ragged outfit is substantially better defense than the peasant shirt. Now, the army recruit can upgrade either to infantry or to crossbow militia. And I'm gonna go through the infantry tree first. So that becomes infantry. Now, as you can see, as our troops get higher in quality, they start to take on a more European appearance in their armor. For example, the infantry has a noble black cuirass, a sergeant morion, leather gloves, a Chinese sword, a one-handed axe, and an Arabian iron mace. So the infantry is basically a jack of all trades. If I want, I can command them to use blunt weapons and they can take prisoners. Otherwise, they could use the axe or the sword. And I did this to keep a little bit of variety amongst them because they choose what they want. They've got the black leather boots, which is a shame because this is like a basic level troop and yet it has the best boots in the game. Even my companions haven't found boots this good. And a heavy board shield. No ranged attack, however. And then the infantry can recruit either to a squire, which is cavalry, or a warrior. And we're going to continue following the infantry tree to the warrior. Now this gentleman looks a bit more Portuguese, but he's got more of a lighter blue set up and he has scale gauntlets a portuguese three-quarter armor 
regular boots, a European Sergeant Morion, a heater shield, which of course has the sigil of Frigoberto on it. It doesn't show in here, but it will show on the battlefield. And they have a choice of a winged mace or a Dab Hua Tat sword. So they also can be used to get prisoners or just attack with the sword, depending on what Frigoberto commands. And also no ranged weapon. Now the warrior can be upgraded to either a sergeant or a heavy sergeant. The sergeant is my main defender. The sergeant, as you can see, is fully European in appearance. He wields a Arabian iron mace only, so these guys are pure armor piercing, blunt damage. He is the only guy who does not have a shield that has the sigil of Frigoberto on it. He actually has a Portuguese decorated steel shield because it is a substantially better shield. A guard helmet, gauntlets, plate boots, and full plate armor. No ranged weapon. These guys are going to be my main battle line guys and my defenders of the castles and cities that I take. And the most elite and wondrous infantry of the Kingdom of Frigoberto are the Heavy Sergeants, who I refer to as my Varangian Guard. I wish I could change the names. I'm sure someone like Arcade Knight would know how to do it, but I do not. They, like Frigoberto, have a close burgonet. They, like Frigoberto, have Italian full plate armor, black leather boots, gauntlets, which are actually better than what Frigoberto has, a heavy heater shield with the sigil of Frigoberto, but that's only when they're using their pistol. They have a pistol and cartridges. But when they are in normal formation without the shield, they have a choice of a two-handed battle axe or a great long axe. Now, the great long axe has a better attack, but it's slower and a much longer reach. The battle axe is faster and not as good a reach. So I'm going to allow them to choose which one they want to use. And these are going to be my most heavy elite shock infantry. Although with their armor, they're also going to be very difficult to take down. So now following the ranged path, if you go with an army recruit and decide to do a crossbow militia, you have this gentleman who wears the exact same clothes as the army recruit, except for slightly better shoes, although he instead has a crossbow with steel bolts, but he also has a daub sword as a backup and the common board shield. He does have Chinese leather boots. Now the crossbow militia upgrades to the musketman, who begins to start looking pretty European. The musketman has a cabasset, infantry cuirass, and an Arabian scimitar. He also has a European matchlock and two sets of cartridges so that he can fire a lot. Heavy board shield, black leather boots, and leather gloves. So the crossbow militia, or sorry, the musketman, can either upgrade to the sharpshooter or the mounted archer. The sharpshooter is our highest level ranged troop, and he wears a black morion with a feather, a Portuguese noble three-quarters armor, lamellar gauntlets, he has a Chinese short sword or a European noble rapier to choose from, two sets of cartridges, the black leather boots, and he has the choice of either a long matchlock or a four barrels matchlock. The long matchlock has better damage, better accuracy. The four barrels, of course, can shoot four times. So I'm going to let them choose which ones they want to use. Then there's the mounted archer. We're probably not going to have that many of these, honestly. They're just a ranged archer unit. They have a male shirt a kettle hat, a Manipuri heater shield with the sigil of Frigoberto on it, male chosses, scale gauntlets. They're riding a Manipuri pony because speed is a lot more useful than armor in their case. They do have a Chinese war sword, which has a pretty good reach, but their main attack is a war bow with bodkin arrows. And that's all of the ranged troops. So if you start back with a warrior, you get to, or an infantry, you get to upgrade to a squire. Squires are light cavalry. Squire have a Mongolian-influenced kind of lamellar guard helm. They have a Hauberg Jian. The horse they ride is a hunter. They have lamellar gauntlets, male boots, and a horseman's heater shield. And for melee weapon, they have the choice of a heavy saver or an elite scimitar. I chose these two because they have long reach and high speed. 
And then finally, they have a matchlock carbine and cartridges, so they can be used as a ranged cavalry force as well. And then finally, at the top of the cavalry tree is our Royal Guard, who are basically our cataphracts, the Frigobertin cataphracts. They ride a charger. They wear full plate armor, plate boots, gauntlets, the close burgonet, a Manipuri heater shield, and an iron war axe in case they want to fight with shield and axe. If they choose, they can also use a G halberd, which is the only kind of Southeast Asian inspired weapon they have, but it's pretty awesome. It's an amazing thrusting polearm, so they can charge with it. They can also swing with it, and it has ridiculous reach, and it looks really, really cool. And then finally, they have a matchlock carbine and cartridges, so they can also be used as ranged cavalry. They could shoot fleeing enemies, things of that sort. So these guys are our heavy cavalry, and we have quite a few of them. I think at this point I have, yes, I have 62 of them traveling with Frigoberto. And I'm actually going to change all this up now because Frigoberto is moving around with a pure cavalry force. I pulled all these guys into the army just to show you what they look like. But I'm now going to go put them back in Don Kin. And those are the armies of Frigoberto. And they are pretty highfalutin, I've got to say. They can take out enemy armies like no one's business. Let's so give the sharpshooter, the musketman, the militia. Our Varangian, Sergeant, Warrior, Infantry, Army Recruit, and finally Peasants. Okay, so now everyone we have is Cavalry. And we're currently building things everywhere. We've already built the first stage of most of our villages and cities. We've got messenger posts everywhere. As I mentioned, we are at peace with the Lay, so there's really not much for Frigoberto to do. What he's been doing is just going around to the different villages, seeing if they need any help. But we'll take on some main deserters so that I can show you our Royal Guard in action. As you can see, I'm surrounded by them. You can see the gun strapped on their back. It appears that currently, not many of them are using a lance. Most of them are using their shield and sword. It is nighttime, so you're probably not getting the absolute best view ever. The Ming are going to have a bad day. Frigobertus better on the ground. There's one of our Royal Guard. He's attacking with his axe. Oh, he's using his... He's using his lance. I can see that. Okay, so they do. They kind of switch between them. Depending on what they need. Their full plate armor. We didn't even lose one of them. We just had two wounded other types of cavalry. A brigand and a volunteer guard leader. They are a tad OP. But I enjoy it. What I'm really itching to do is start fighting the lay again. Let's see. Elder. Is there anything I can do for you? No, you don't need anything. That's a shame. Trying to build up good relationships with all these guys. Although over time they will grow simply because I taxed them very low. Ayuthaya and Lan Shang and made peace. Ayuthaya and Tongu. Great. Ayuthaya is maybe going to survive a bit longer. They're down to just Ayuthaya. They've lost Korat and Pitsanulok. But they do have plenty of castles. My father-in-law still has Angkor. Alright, let's see what Napung is doing here. Let's recruit some personal recruits. Hello, Elder. Do you have anything I can do for you? No, you don't need anything either. Well, that's a shame. 
Lang Son is currently being defended by, let's see here, 1,481 troops. Oh, here is a challenge for us. Shirahama Kanki. He's a bit outnumbered. But let's see how our Royal Guard do against him in his daytime. So we can see a more exciting battle. There they are. My beautiful plate-armored Royal Guard on their cataphract horses. Let's see if I can find some of the other cavalry. I don't think I have that many squires. Just a couple. Oh well. Let's take out these Japanese guys. We know how good these guys are because... They were Frigoberto's honor guard for a while. These Waco bandits. Oh, come on, Frigoberto. Enough of this. Let's mace them. Royal Guard are entering the fray. Wow, they're everywhere. And they're using their lances. That's pretty cool. I can't even move around. There's so many Royal Guard. There's Tifsuda. Hey, these guys actually let me get one. That was nice of you. Look at all of them. Look at all these Royal Guard just charging everywhere. see. Any squires? Anywhere? There's Shopper Kimpy. No, I guess. I'm having trouble. There's that squire. No, that's a Ming Desider leader. Let's see if we can't find a squire. There's Royal Guard. Main deserter leader. Main deserter leader. Squires probably aren't even on the battlefield. We lost a Manipuri veteran, a Rumbai Humba. Two of our royal guards actually were wounded. And we just got 10,000 gold and some Waco bandits as prisoners. And look at all this. All right, let's get some royal elephants. We'll get some Ming to put in the cities to guard it. We'll take everything. Why not? And once again, I have to say, I wish there was a button that said, take everything. And done. Excellent. We got some Ronin armor. It's worth some good money. Excellent. Taking out Shirahama Kenki was a good move financially. Let's go back to our old capital of Langsan, but first I'm going to check this village and just see if they need anything. Nope. Alright, fine. Be that way. But we'll go to Langsan. The Lord's Hall of Langsan is actually the exact same as the Lord's Hall of Don Kin. We're just going to put all of the infantry troops in here to guard it. Except for my recruits, my peasant recruits, because I'm hoping to train them up. And five of our squires can be upgraded to royal guards. Excellent. Can anybody else be upgraded? All right, let's quickly go to the marketplace and sell some of our goods. All right, that's everything. 
I think Sato is an alcohol. I think we'd want that for when we start having feasts. I take the rice seeds just in case we run into a quest where they want rice seeds. But we haven't so far. No good horses. Thick, heavy lamellar, huh? Nowhere near as good as what I've got, but still pretty solid armor. I have never found a gauntlet that I can purchase, anyway, that's as good as the thick cote. Probably down in the Portuguese lands would be where it would be at. And no more cannonballs. So that's basically what we've been up to and what we will continue to be up to is just for the next six days before we get into war again with the lay, we are going to try to improve the standing of our villages, try to invest money in our towns and villages, and go around fighting Ming, I guess, to train up a huge army of the troops of the kingdom of Frigoberto. I hope you enjoyed looking at our troops. I hope that you feel like I did a good job creating them. The choices were not extensive. You know, I'll show you real quick before we, before we end this. Like, let's take a look at the squire, for example. And the button is let me select your equipment. So, you know, we could put them theoretically on elephants if we wanted to. We could put them, give them Nagao. So we can give them a lance weapon. I didn't want to. I wanted them to be a shield and sword or a ranged unit. We could have given them different kinds of shields. I chose the horseman's heater because it looked like the best. As you can see, different hats, different outfits. I chose the Halbergion because all the rest were red or green, didn't really match. I chose this particular helmet, even though I don't really like it, because these are gold and red, don't really match our color scheme at all. So in many cases, I chose based on Frigoberto's color scheme rather than, rather than just pure stats of the weapons. Could have given him an iron battle axe, but I liked the idea of the swords for these particular units. And that's how it works. Let's go to the Royal Guard. They have a bit more variety. So they could also ride an elephant. They have a sword staff. I chose the G Halberd, but I could also have a Quan Play Hawk or a Qua Spear or an Ngao. Ngao. I could also have a European style Halberd if I wanted to. They could have been dressed in full plate, Spanish cuirass, but I chose the full plate. They have different Levels of helmet. Could have had one of those Burmese helmets, the pointy ones. There's lamellar armor, which would have made them more like a cataphract, but the full plate is actually better. There's plate armor, 5517. So that's not even as good. Where's the full plate? Or Vietnamese guard armor. So you have all these choices, but I chose what I chose. I could have chosen a step charger instead of a charger. The reason I didn't is this has more armor. It does have less maneuver, but more charge and more hit points. So overall, it's a better animal. Black Greaves, 35. So these are actually better than the plate boots, but black greaves don't really go with the aesthetic of the army of Frigoberto. And there's the full plate armor. So... All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, I'm Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.